Good morning. Peace and love and joy and welcome and hospitality to whoever you are, wherever you've come from, whoever you love, and wherever you are on your spiritual journey. Gosh, it's good to be here this morning with all of you worshiping. Today is a big day in the life of the church. Uh, it is September 12th. Uh, it is the beginning of our program year. Our Sunday school uh, children's church has been meeting all summer, but they restart anew, and they are uh, even now outside. We also have a, a rekindling of all of the programs and events and studies and things that happen around here this time of year. And so we have that to celebrate this morning. We also have new members joining, and uh, we are grateful for that. There are seven new members joining, but I'll say that two of them uh, won't be, they'll be here by Zoom. Lewis Mudge is in Africa, and Nicola Mudge, the boys woke up sick this morning. And just for abundance of caution, they've decided to stay home. But the other members and their sponsors will come forward and we'll have a special moment with them. Uh, we'll also have a special coffee fellowship time after the service, and we're looking forward to that. A couple of notes. Uh, yesterday was an interesting day in the, in the morning at uh, about 9.30 or so. I got a call from Karen Waters, our liturgist, who wasn't feeling well. So out of an abundance of caution, she decided not to come in. And so Nancy Pricer will be our liturgist. And then a few minutes later, our musician, Peter Bingham, who was going to play all live music this morning and uh, who uh, wrote a song for this morning. He uh, had a close COVID contact a few days ago and decided it best for him to not come in. So Peter, if you are worshiping at home, and I think you are, we thank you very much. And uh, he spent all day yesterday recording all of the music for us. And so we will have projected music, very lovely, and then we'll have him with us here another time to be live. So with that, may uh, this be a place of growth and of nurture through worship and silence and word. May you have your cup filled, and may we celebrate a new year at Sherlock Congregational Church. Welcome, welcome. Before moving more fully into the service, another reason that this service is big today is because it is the day after the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And uh, certainly there has been um, many specials on television and news reports and lots of remembering about uh, that event 20 years ago and about what it meant then, what it has meant all along the way, and what it still means to us today. So we wanted to take a moment in church here to recognize that solemn occasion and to reflect and to give the fullness of our thoughts, our emotions uh, to our God who we worship this morning. So uh, I invite you to just get comfortable for a minute. Just close your eyes, take a deep breath. Listen to some words from me, and then we'll take a moment to pause together. A day after the 20th anniversary of 9-11, I invite us all into a minute of silent prayer today. Like many of you, I remember 9-11-2001 very clearly. Exactly where I was standing when I heard the news, how helpless and afraid I felt. The questions I had for God about the images I was seeing on my screen. My wife's voice when she learned that a college classmate had died. I remember all of that. That was 20 years ago now, but the shadow of that day remains with us. We still mourn those who died. Many are still suffering from the physical, emotional, and spiritual wounds they suffered that day. Anti-Islamic sentiment is still a threat to our Muslim sisters and brothers in this country and around the world. Terrorism is still a cancer. 9-11 is still an open wound. And so this morning we begin our time of worship by acknowledging this still open wound, asking for God's healing love to be upon us all. So God, be with us now in this time of silence where we offer to you all that is in our hearts.
the same way that Good Friday is not the last word. 9-11 is not the last word. From hope to hope and with hope, we pray to you, God. May we not only remember 9-11, but in the words of our National United Church of Christ leader, may we be compelled by it to turn toward the ways that make for peace between all peoples, to unlearn the ways of war and terror, to no longer cultivate fear for the purchase of political power, to be eager to know both the conditions that make for suffering and the requisite empathy needed to alleviate. For we pray boldly and in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter Bingham uh, will play for us now a, a beautiful piece by the great Armenian poet, um, no, uh, Syat Nova. It's a song appropriately titled, I Shall Not Be Sad in This World. And he's playing, the instrument he's playing is an Armenian folk instrument called the oud. Moving from musical prayer, uh, let's move to our opening prayer and Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> I invite you to join me in saying together, God who chooses us, we gather today for many reasons and from many places. Through prayer, silence, music, word, new members, and fellowship, we'll receive many messages. May these messages become love, peace, healing, and good news. And may these messages be joined by this one message, heard loudly and clearly by all. You choose us. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And sings my soul, O oh Lord, my God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, O oh Lord, my God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then Christ shall come with shouts and acclamation and take me to my shelter. Then I shall bow in full admiration and there At this time, we welcome forward uh, Lynn Fox, Evan and Elizabeth Langfelt, and Louisa. Lewis and Nicola Mudge, we welcome, but they are worshiping from home this morning. Jessica Scriver, and your family, if you wish. And uh, Laura Wolfson and Denise, join us. And Elizabeth Bates, we'll have you join us as well. Maybe, Laura, if you want to, maybe we'll kind of balance ourselves out here. I need to scoot by you and bring this microphone out so we can hear one another. It is a tripping hazard, so be careful. Sorry, Elizabeth. friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. 
these friends have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. They've been led by the Holy Spirit, Spirit to affirm their baptisms and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Welcome. So hear these words from Scripture, from Ephesians. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Elizabeth, I'll have you come and speak, stand in the middle so that we can I'll hear you at home. <clears throat> and I'll need you to sort of stand in front of the mic. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Well, I mean, facing them, facing the mics. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we welcome you and we thank you for choosing to make this your community of faith. We are more complete with your presence. And we pray that this church will add richness and grace to your life. In response to the covenant that God made with us through Jesus Christ, we enter into covenant with God and with one another to form the church. We invite you now to covenant with us by reaffirming your faith. Please respond to the following questions by answering. I do. Do you intend to explore and remain open to God's ways, both now and in the days to come, not in blind faith, but with honesty and openness? I do. Do you intend honestly and diligently to grow in your understanding of and commitment to the way of Jesus, resisting hate and oppression, doing justice? and furthering Christ's love in the world. Do you intend to stay open to the workings of the Holy Spirit within you, among those around you, and in the midst of all creation? Do you intend to be a faithful member of this church and through this church to be faithful to the life and work of Christ in the world, supporting it with your time, your imagination and your resources as you are able. And do all of you, the body of Christ, the church, nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, including these people now before you and in your care? If so, please answer, I will. I invite you to stand as you are able. So uh, a bit about our process that uh, throughout our uh, new member classes, we give homework and we invite you all to go home and to write succinct statements of faith, elevator line, uh, statements, basically about what you believe. Uh, not, a, not a simple task, but uh, a helpful one, I hope and I think. And then Susan has a really difficult job. She takes all of those statements and then she weaves them together in a statement that we say uh, in worship um, at this moment here. So a, a way of, um, a, of connecting with the tradition and our past and our ancestors with our other statements, but also a way of making this faith our own and giving you an opportunity to articulate what you believe and to um, allow the rest of us to process that and reflect that for our own growth and edification. So thank you for your good and hard work and Susan for weaving it all together. So I invite us all now to say those statements and Deirdre, are those um, able to be projected? Good. We believe in a benevolent, merciful, merciful and loving, loving God, God who holds all creation, creation and, and every, every living, living thing, thing in compassion and embrace. embrace. Following, following Jesus' example, we are, are called, called to question, question our beliefs 
as we strive to grow in faith. In gratitude, we seek to let go of strife and live in joy so that through us, God may heal the broken and lift up the downhearted. We trust this Christian community to guide us in our spiritual quests envelop us in a positive force of prayer and help us live into the truth of God's love. Embraced by the healing love of Jesus Christ and inspired by his teachings, we commit ourselves to prayerful, compassionate, and courageous action in the world. We do therefore bind ourselves in the presence of God to, to walk, walk together, together in all God's, God's ways, ever watchful for how God's blessed word of truth shall be revealed unto us. Amen. You may be seated. So by your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and to this place and to this congregation. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home in the past. And we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. So let us pray. Oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us in this church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one, uh, one another up in love, sharing in the life and the worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Susan, so, I just have one thing, sorry to interrupt, yes. but I just um, want to mention that uh, for new members, we offer um, a chance to have a sponsor, to select a sponsor, someone to walk with you informally in the life of this church. Some people choose to do that and some people don't, but I just, um, it's kind of hard to have everyone gather up here uh, and be distant. So, uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge Francis Foster is the sponsor for Lynn Fox, and I am the proud sponsor of Laura. And Jessica, your sponsor is Hadley, who is teaching Sunday school this morning. And so um, may you be a support and growth and encouragement to one another. And don't worry, we've got, we'll, we'll, all, we'll all sponsor, yeah. Yeah, you need, yeah, absolutely. And you too, Mudges. <laughs> oh, Mudges, they came, yeah, Mudges. Right. <laughs> so on behalf of the church and on behalf especially of the Charlotte Congregational Church, we usually go through and hug everybody, but we extend to you the blessings of Christian love. Peace to you. Peace. Welcome, welcome, peace to you. So Elizabeth, I'm gonna have you grab those um, certificates in. Louisa, do you want a job? Yeah. It's a fun job. See those flowers, the roses? Would you be willing to grab those and give one to each family? Which means you can have one too. <laughs> Those roses are given to us most Sundays this time of year by Ivan Plouffe, and, uh, and so we give thanks to him. And Mudges, we'll, we'll give you one next time you're here. Don't worry. You can have that one. <laughs> it's worth noting that... I don't know where the theological meaning is in this, but all the thorns have been removed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's clap. So welcome. We look forward to getting to know you better and growing with you and serving with you. We love you. And um, please, we're here for you on your journey as you want and need. So go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Louisa. So I hope that all of you at home 
um, are able to experience the joy that was in this sanctuary and to hold these new members in your hearts. So um, with this is our time for prayer. Are there people for whom you would like to raise prayers of healing, petition, joy? Are there any concerns this morning? Yes, Emily. So prayers of joy from Emily Kittredge for her niece, who is going to be married next Saturday in Connecticut. Anyone else? Yes, Jack. So prayers for Jack's uh, roommate and a, a dear friend from childhood, Jack, um, George Hansen, who is fighting leukemia. Yes, Rad. So congratulations to all the sports teams. This is from Rad um, at CBU because every team won this week. Anyone else? Yes, Sandy. So prayers, this is from Sandy Riggs, prayers for Norm Riggs' childhood friend whose wife underwent, um, underwent nine hours of brain surgery this week and is still in the ICU. So prayers for her and for her husband and for both of you. Kevin. Prayers for, from Kevin and from all of us for our Sunday school. And as they begin a new year, um, challenging as always, but under the wonderful leadership of Hadley. Yes, Nancy. So prayers for Nancy Warren Farley's um, dad who is 84 and going in for hip replacement surgery. So prayers for him and for your whole family. Yes, Kathy. So prayers for the run for jump that goes for an entire week that starts this coming Saturday. So for all the runners and all the sponsors and all the people at jump who made this happen. Rad. So, so prayers for um, the Kelly Brush Foundation. And for Kelly, for her leadership in this foundation, and for all of the people who bicycled yesterday and for those who supported them. Um, I would also raise up that this afternoon, uh, the traditional choral festival that happens at Shelburne Farms on this Sunday is actually happening at All Souls Interfaith Gathering in Shelburne this afternoon at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock. 4.30, and Kevin is going to participate in that. Yes, Meg. So prayers for the community that um, Meg grew up in, in Connecticut, in Fenwick. There have been uh, multiple deaths in that community in the course of one week of young people in their 30s. So let us pray.
Dear God, there's a chill in the air these days, and it comes from more than the crisp mornings. Yesterday's crystal air, blue sky, and beaming sun were too reminiscent of 9-11 20 years ago. It's the weather and the light that stir memories most, and yesterday was a searing mix of beauty and pain. We're apprehensive about many things, and worry can seed itself in our bodies, in our cores. And rather than facing trials with calm and love, our frames are rigid and shield us from your love, shield us from loving and giving. Gracious God, help us to remember and honor the first responders of that fateful day by following their example and seeking out those in need. Lead us to embrace your love as the backdrop and grounding of our lives. Teach us to live with gratitude and reverence for every day. Take from us the drumbeat of apprehension that vibrates in our spines. Be our shield and stay and help us to live honestly and courageously no matter what may follow. Grant us the strength to go forth in hope and in faith, to work tirelessly for justice and peace, to rejoice with those who have chosen to join our congregation this morning and the cyclists who peddled yesterday with determination, to stand with those who are threatened, to weep with those who mourn and sit calmly with the bewildered. Christ within us, still our vibrating spines and bless us as your beloved and humble children. Amen. In all I because we should or ought or must, but because we can, because we're moved with joy to give back some of what has first come to us. Let us offer our gifts this morning and let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the abundance that falls from the skies and grows from the ground and comes to our bank accounts in a variety of different ways. We um, just rest in that. And we ask for hearts of gratitude. And so whether we give back a little or a lot, regardless of our means, may that come through us with a sense of joy and peace, a sense of your vision for a world of love. It's not a simple thing that we do to offer our gifts, God. But we give you thanks for this time and this moment to do that. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Our reading this morning comes from the very practical letter of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In these verses, James recognizes the power of our tongues and the difficulty we humans have of taming. Let us listen together. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless God, and with it, we curse those who make the likeness of God. From the same mouth, Come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine fig? No more can salt water yield fresh. May God bless this reading and hearing. Thank you. So it's true from a very early age we learn that our mouths, our tongues, our voices contain great power long before we can walk, long before we can mumble even uh, one word, we learn to cry to get what we want. We want what we want and we use our mouths to learn how to get it. As effective as our, the cries of an infant are, we get more sophisticated hopefully as we, as we go, we learn other techniques. One of the uh, techniques we learn is not only how to cry, but over time we learn how to use humor, right? To influence, to communicate, to, to be winsome. We learn the darker arts too. We learn how to influence by manipulation or by lying or by bullying. We use our mouths over time as well to build partnerships, to learn, to teach, to heal, and to love. Over time, we learn again and again that our mouths, our voices, our tongues contain great power. Let's pray. Loving God, on this big day in the life of the church, with new members, a program year, the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and so much else going on in our lives and in our hearts, we look to your ancient wisdom to your ongoing presence, to be love and life and good news. Meet us here and help us to meet you. Amen. The tradition holds that the letter of James was written by an early church leader named James, who also was Jesus's brother. But whoever wrote the letter of James, the author or author seemed to know what I just said, that our mouths, our tongues, our voices contain great power. A uh, little bridle in the house, uh, mouth of a horse can steal the whole steer, the whole horse, James said. 
a little rudder can steer the whole ship. Mouth, the tongue is a fire, James says succinctly. After this series of three metaphors, uh, he goes on to say in uh, verse 9, to, to, to name uh, one of the tensions, the problems with our tongues, that we are at the same time able to use our mouths to bless God, but at the same time to curse those who are made in the likeness of God. He names a duality that we have. How easy it is for us to vacillate back and forth between blessing God and cursing our neighbors. This is one of the reasons why the tongue is hard to tame and why it causes so many problems. Let's push a little further into the text. So uh, in, in the text, we find that uh, James's focus is on the external, right? The social and the public. He uses phrases like this in reference to the tongue. He uses a phrase like a world of iniquity attached to the tongue. It's about the cycle of nature for every species of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature. He uses phrases like human species and a restless evil full of deadly poison. Putting that all together, I think it's clear that James's primary focus here is on how our tongues impact those around us externally, publicly, and socially. But here's the thing. So when we come to this, this phrase in uh, verse 9, where James says that we can curse uh, others with the same tongue that we bless God, we hear that in an external way we could very easily interpret this phrase in the way that seems most natural, right? That we bless God with our mouths and we curse other people. But one of the core tenets of our Christian faith is that not just some of us, but all of us are made in the likeness of God. Our neighbors, yes, but also ourselves. So it's possible and good and right to read this externally, publicly, socially, and, and to interpret it as that we use our mouths to bless God and to curse other people, but it is equally valid to read it more personally, internally, right, privately, and to read it as that we use our mouths to bless God, but also to curse ourselves. You hear curses themselves, right? Uses our mouths, our voices, our tongues to beat ourselves up, to shame ourselves. Maybe this morning with the same mouth that you have used to praise and worship and to bless God, maybe already this morning you have said some not very nice things about yourself, berating yourself, cutting yourself down for something you did or didn't do, don't worry, you don't have to raise your hand. I'm a human being too. And I know that we human beings do this all the time. We beat ourselves up. We use our mouths to bless God, yes, but also to curse ourselves. But as James says in verse 10, brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. So, we uh, have talked this morning so far about how our mouths, tongues, voices have great power, right? But also that we use that power too often to curse our neighbors and ourselves. But very clearly, very simply, James would like for us to not do that, right? James is encouraging us to have not dual mouths, but mono now mouths to bless, learning to use our mouths to steer us, to bridle us to a place where we're blessing ourselves and blessing God and blessing our neighbor. When I was in college in the early 1990s at the University of Pittsburgh, I uh, went to school with a woman who was about 12 years older than all the rest of us. She had uh, graduated from high school all those years beforehand. She moved to Florida. She got an apartment. She got a job working in the restaurant industry. And she partied a lot, had a lot of fun. 
It was all fun to start until it wasn't so much fun anymore. And over the years, she became an alcoholic and a meth addict. And finally, she became homeless. And so by the time I met her, she was back home living with her sister. She was in recovery. She was happy and healthy and uh, in this great English program at a fine University of Pittsburgh program. I liked her a lot and we became friends. And one of the things I liked so much about her is just her honesty about her past. She was self-effacing. She wasn't shamed about her addictions and the, the 10 to 12 years she had spent kind of going down the wrong path in her own admission. And it, she wasn't shamed by it. She didn't try to hide it. It was just her story and just part of who she was. And something that became part of who she was, that over time, something that allowed her to move into recovery, that helped her to be resilient, was a lesson that she tried to teach me all the time. She would say to me, when I would get down on myself, she'd say, Kevin, you know, you can only beat yourself up so much. Kevin, you can only beat yourself up so much. She had spent most of her life beating herself up, berating herself, shaming herself, thinking that she was without value and useless which contributed to her addictions and all of the negative stuff that happened to her. But by the time I met her, she had worked through a lot of that, and she was trying to teach me how to do that as well. Kevin, she would say, often, you can only beat yourself up so much. You got to be nice to yourself. You got to love yourself. And the fruit of that in her life, coming on the path that she had and arriving at that moment, for her was recovery and resilience and happiness and joy. And the fruit of that too, she became a teacher who's teaching me and others how to do and be the same. James is right. The mouth is a bridle that, a bridle that steals the whole horse. The mouth is a rudder that steers the whole ship. It is fire and it is power. And he is right to caution us, to tell us to take great care with what we say. We need to be diligent to keep track of what we're saying and how we're saying it and how that impacts those around us and also ourselves. So the caution is good. But the light side of that, though, is, is that we have tremendous power right here with us all the time, an incredible tool that we can use to be people of blessing. People who use our tongues to bless God, people of blessing who use our tongues to bless our neighbors, people of blessing who use our tongues to bless ourselves. And maybe that's where it starts, right? Learning how to bless ourselves. You can only beat yourself up so much. You got to care for yourself. You got to love yourself. So to start by blessing yourself so that you can bless others and bless God too. It's a very practical letter, a very practical message this morning. And so let's end with some practice of using our mouths to bless. Join me if you want. So imagine where you think God is, maybe up, maybe outside, maybe around somewhere, but just look to wherever you think God is and say, you can say it, God, I bless you. I know we have masks and we're trying to be careful, but we can do a little better than that, right? right? Okay, let's try that again. God, I bless you. Nice. Now maybe catch somebody's eye who's across the aisle or up in the balcony maybe. If you know their name, you can call it, but just say friend, neighbor, or the name. Rachel, I bless you. Let's try that. Susan, I bless you. <laughs> and now maybe give yourself a big old hug, right? Right. Be nice to yourself. Love yourself. And then you just call yourself by name. My name is Kevin, so don't say my name. I'll say my name, but you can say your name, okay? We'll say this a couple of times. Kevin, I bless you. Kevin, I bless you. So let's do that when we leave here today. Mouths of blessing to bless ourselves so that we can bless our neighbors and bless God. Amen.
breathing with the ocean, feel the water pounding, hear the earth calling, listen to her now. life with new words, make a new world, create a new language to find a way home, to show the way home. She says, look upon the ocean, feel your own heartbeat, where the words start. Closer service is always just a few announcements. Uh, again, thank you to Peter for uh, providing the music for us this morning and that beautiful piece that you composed for us. Uh, welcome and thanks to the new members as well. Uh, so glad to have this moment with all of you, and we look forward to growing with you as we said earlier. Uh, next, uh, I guess I want to say this that um, we're trying to have. The maximum capacity in this room be at 50 so we'll just have to see how our numbers go as we go throughout the fall but our backup plan uh, is we have the vestry as overflow with a high definition television and everything that happens in here gets fed over there and our deacons will set up a, 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 a chapel every every sunday morning candle cross uh, and just very pleasant atmosphere there so that if we get to 50 here, that we'll invite some folks who choose to go over there to worship over there. And so anyway, just trying to keep us all safe, but also a way for us to connect and be on this campus together. When good weather, we can also sit outside and we have speakers that allow us to worship outside. So when you come to worship on Sunday mornings, it's COVID, you never know what you're gonna get, but you will get worship. Uh, next week is another exciting and big week in the life of this church. Can you believe it? Our choir is going to sing for the first time in a long time. Uh, we have enough choir members that um, we're not comfortable singing with that group in this space. So they're going to record on Wednesday. So the choral music will be recorded next week, but recorded live in this place. Uh, but Dick Van Vliet, uh, who's going to be helping us out this fall, um, uh, many weeks, 
he will be here and be playing live music for us as well. For those of you who don't know Dick, Dick is a former uh, music director in this church who lives in Heinsberg and uh, just a very wonderful and talented musician and choir director. So we look forward to welcoming him back to Sherlock Congregational Church. But that's not all next week because Arnold Thomas will be here with us. Arnold is a longtime uh, minister in the Vermont Conference. He was our conference minister at one point. He was also the interim minister here before my time, and he lives in Underhill, so I've known him for a very long time. Uh, he is very active in doing anti-racism work around the state and has been for a very long time. So Social Justice is partnering with him, as is Susan, to bring him here to talk to him about his anti-racism work. He will be speaking about that during the sermon time. And then after the service, we'll gather, regather in here, and he will have a conversation with us about that work and opportunity for us to, to talk and ask questions with him. Now, to make this all work, Susan will be here helping to lead that service, and Social Justice will be helping coordinate the after events. I will be in Jericho leading worship at his church. And I was raised Lutheran, and he is a UCC minister, but at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho. I know that congregation and many of those people, somewhat of a homecoming for me. And so pray for me as I go and bring greetings from Sherlock Congregational Church. And good luck. Have fun. <laughs> That's all I have. Any other news or announcements this morning? I do have one. Um, starting this Tuesday at 930, our book um, study will reconvene and we will be studying Richard Rohr's The Universal Christ. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful, incredibly formative book for me and everyone is welcome. It'll be um, on Zoom. And this first week, we will just be introducing ourselves, checking in with one another. So there's no assignment for this week, but the next week we will just be looking at the introduction. And the books, um, all the information is in the courier. The books are available, paperback, hardback, Kindle, Audible. Um, if you do choose to read it on an Audible, I really suggest you get the hardback or the, or the paperback as well. Um, it's, it's important to be able to underline these things. But um, if there is a group of people that can't meet on Monday, on Tuesdays at 9.30, I am open if there are sufficient numbers to offer it again at another time in the week. So just get in touch with me. So I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our benediction this morning comes to us from Peter Bingham, who just sang to us, may we find new words and create new worlds that we might all find the way home. Dearest ones, go in peace. Amen. I invite you to stand as Peter sings us, may the blessings of God. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide in you. May God's presence illuminate your heart. 